Wow, I can't believe it's come to this. <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen. Season 2 final episode. That guy's gone. That guy's captured. I feel like <laughs> this opening now is just like a memorial for the fallen. What even is the cast gonna be? Um, he's gone, tragically. She's fine, but gone. In a box. <laughs> dead. Or in fake ghetto. Oh yeah, everyone should be also dead. What happened to the Hachiko statue? UG mental breakdown. Alive! Dead. <laughs> in Malaysia. Oh, she's covering her eye. How did I not notice that till right now? Foreshadowing in the intro. Wow, I really did not pay attention. <laughs> There's just the intro told the whole story. Only you knew what to look for, where to look. Last time on Jujutsu Kaisen, Yuki showed up to ask Fake Edo, what is your ideal woman? What is your type? I feel like he's going to give the wrong answer, and so he must suffer. <laughs> I already am, uh, love her, prepared to love her. She remembers. Maybe take the ice cubes out of your shoulder. I still... I don't know. I've been told it was a big nothing that Ghetto still had some control. And obviously some people know a lot better than I do about the future of the story, but I feel like it's there as an option always until he dies or something. It almost seems too narratively interesting to pass up, just like Gojo being destroyed. I mean, the characters are still talking to him. I wonder what it is specifically about Japan. I don't think Ghetto or fake Ghetto really cares about like the destruction of human beings. Yeah. Clearly. Clearly. I'm so glad they brought this discussion full circle. They have common ground, right? Or they had common ground. Ghetto is no longer around to speak for himself, but his issue, his problem is legitimate and is still still around. And that's that the Jujutsu Sorcerer Society thing is sort of unsustainable. You can't ask a couple individuals to shoulder the, the evil burden of all of humanity. Thankfully, there actually are heroes that are trying, but they pay an enormous cost and the dangers of having them around and being corrupted, like what happened with Ghetto, is an issue. As noble as the stated aims of the society are and as heroic some of the characters are, to me, there's something like a systemic flaw in it that's never really going to go well and that's maybe something like a lack of faith in humanity as a whole. I mean, speaking of common ground, that's something that the villains and the heroes share in practice. It's like the little people, the normal humans, just can't cope with pain. They just are curse producing monsters and they don't know any better. They can't do any better. They don't deserve to know any better so we will just do everything for them. Like no wonder they grow resentful. And even in the heroism there, there's like a little bit of arrogance to that. We're special to quote the intro. We're the chosen ones. Credit to their point, in the show's terms not everyone has the the, the power levels necessary to do what they're doing. The raw base stats, let's say, the starting point some people have for leading a good life, having extra resources to explore ideas like free will and maximum personal responsibility, etc. when they're struggling for survival, or even intelligence, interest, whatever. But I think you could also say that if there is no allowance to them or faith in them, giving them the full truth, that they wouldn't be able to do better than now, that the curse load would be reduced on the people who are fighting them, that some gems really would emerge from society, or that people actually could do better. And Instead of having this fixed local point of centralized control that's honestly extremely fragile, you spread that out across, I guess, Japanese society to let people live and die by their own choices. And that's difficult. It requires an immense leap of faith. But if we're fighting a, a very difficult, seemingly right now losing battle anyway, you may as well fight the battle that has the, the greatest possible potential and output. And additionally, I think in life, if there's like these classes and one class is convinced that they know the best outcome for everyone else, that they're the chosen ones who get to make the decisions, especially when it comes to truth, there's no guarantee that they're going to get it right either. Like there's plenty of potential that even with good intentions, they do terrible, terrible things. Or just do terrible, terrible things. Willingly. I think maybe the answer between the two options posed by Yuki and Ghetto is a hybrid of both in conjunction. One is making people more equipped to handle the, the darkness in their own lives. Hitting them with the brutal, painful truth about curses in the world and their own role in it. And have a call to action to make the people who are ready or have the capability to rise to that. And I think in doing so, that actually will reduce the amount of curses being created. It will reduce curse energy because you give people a purpose and a guiding star and a reason to live 
live and responsibility, while initially brutal, it, it's probably the thing that frees them the most from their darkness. And it's hard to relinquish the illusion of control, but we do our best as individuals to focus on ourselves and live our lives and say what we think is true, fight the urge to take easy intellectual outs and have delusions of self-importance, be humble, have faith in one's fellow man, not being blind to evil, really seeing it and understanding it, but also resisting the temptation to grow cynical and hateful. And also, I guess separately, there's an inherent flaw in what Fake Ghetto is saying. He wants something bigger than himself, which is some chaos that is out of his control, but the same would work in a positive direction as well. Like the best things you can do with the biggest impact are going to be bigger than you. It's going to be larger than any action you've done. It's what you do, the goodness you do, let's say, and then the ripple effects of that. The beauty of it is, at least to me, you don't have to be non-human or above human or greater than human to achieve things that are beyond the scope of any one human being. <laughs> Yeah, she's not the only one stalling. Oh, you didn't know. She didn't know. Oh, yeah, he swallowed that. Yeah, yeah, he's doing something with it. Meanwhile, half the protagonists are just still frozen. They're still dealing with Blazaga. God, poor Yuji. Oh, wow. You guys are going to be very sorry, eventually. This plan is so immaculate. Perfect to the last detail. He's not a man to cut corners on any preparations. Oh yeah, I've been there from the beginning of the episode. I like how he's just a full-on ally now. No, 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 you can't, you can't pretend anymore. You're not fooling anyone anymore after what you did, after you blocked that blast out of nowhere. What I was saying earlier might come to back to bite me. If suddenly there's just all these people with these powers. But honestly, I feel like it'll backfire. Eventually. It'll be extremely chaotic in the beginning. You gonna use your Rayquaza or just leave it up there? Wait, 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 leave the box. Big whoops. I guess we're not wrapping this up <laughs> happily. How are you going to explain this to the public? And they don't know, they don't know that it's, there's more to come. This would be a lot more curse energy from this also. Oh yeah, like, one thing I've learned for certain is people are really, really uncomfortable just saying I don't know, not having a theory for something. And there will definitely be people who will use it to their advantage as well. Alternatively, we can get Gojo back. We're just definitely, definitely understaffed for this. Wow, whoa. I mean. Alright, go all the way. I feel like what I'm saying is probably going to be very controversial. And I want to acknowledge that it's not great. Like, it will be really difficult and really terrible, and a lot of bad things will happen. But, like, part of that is build up from, like, however long they've been lying. The bill for lying comes due eventually. Speaking of arrogance, there's some of that, I think, in the idea that you and your small group of elites, let's say, can artificially manipulate and work your way around and grasp in your hands a problem that's way bigger than you and fundamental to to humanity. There's also often a snowball effect to these kinds of things because one lie begets a second lie to the point where the underpinning of your endeavor is lies. You've made the lie a bigger part of the foundation and so if the lie collapses, threatens total collapse because you've created a systemic point of mass failure. Me being me, having my lens, the area I think about this the most is in economic and financial affairs. Bad decisions, well-intentioned or not, beget both lies and more bad decisions to cover the first bad decisions to the point where the whole thing can become very fragile. Actually, one of the only things that mitigates that, that speaks to my point about having faith in the, in the individuals as more robust nodes on the, 
in the system. The efforts of normal people for industry and hard work and creation is a counteracting force for terrible financial policy. <laughs> Oh wow, it's happening live on TV. It's gonna be a rough adjustment though. Wow, <laughs> I did not expect that. Wow, having unrestricted access to Family Mart is kind of a dream. <laughs> nope. No thanks. It's Family Mart, it's great here. Nothing you can offer is better than Family Mart. I feel like some Family Marts have a warm bath. <laughs> it's Japan! Really set yourself up for that one, kid. That's very nice and very bold or ignorant of this young girl. Alright, you kind of had this coming. Oh. She died happy. Oh, she gets saved? Wait, is that- Whoa! About time. Nah, he's good. <laughs> Feels so good to see him. No, but I'll take it. I don't know what it's going to be like. It goes back to what I was saying last episode about who your, your true friends are. I don't need your allegiance to my faction, and I probably won't give my allegiance to your faction. I want to know who you are and what values you stand for. Because values are higher than groups. Groups' values change. Individuals and groups use the name of values to do all manner of things that I, I can't universally give like blanket approval for. Also, do you think for yourself, are you starting from a place of goodness, but because you have a unique insight that you fought for, you developed yourself based on your experiences, have perhaps different conclusions on how to solve that, that's fine. We're aligned fundamentally, and so we're actually a good match because we can learn from each other. We probably each have something unique to contribute. I mean, honestly, looking at the show, I would join Yuji. I would join Nanami. I would without a doubt join Toto. And I might even work for the Jujutsu Society, but I would never marry myself to Jujutsu Society. I don't trust it. I don't trust the people at the top. I don't agree or maybe just don't fully know their fundamental underlying values. Yuki has my respect for that. I mean, I think she actually would be what you want in this situation. <laughs> Plus, she's got badass, whatever this is, Rayquaza. Oh no, I didn't want this. I feel like it'll change her mind. What? Get the hell out of here. Speaking of not aligning with Jujutsu Society, what the hell is this? Good, good riddance. Honestly, from season one, I've been hoping it would go a certain way. And that's like this new entity that's not any of them. It's not villains, not whatever, Ghetto and his crew, it's not the Jujutsu school. Similar to Attack on Titan, actually. How like it reaches its peak or height in my feeling about which group I join once we've like dispensed with the groups and sides. This means we can assemble the, the ultimate squad of the real. That aside, I'm a little bit confused about this move. Why turn on Gojo like this? I mean, I know they've had their reservations about him, but they also need him, no? Gojo was never fully aligned either. Wait, is it the principal? Man, they're going all out. That's not a surprise. It's not gonna happen though. Yikes. We gotta bring Yuta over to the light. Well, it was a fun, what was it? First year of school, I guess? I don't think we'll be going back. We need to check in on Yuji a little bit here. It's a lot, lot to process. Episode 47, Shibuya Incident closed. Because I don't really know that much about the Jujutsu Society, I can't cast too wide of a net when attributing motivations to them, and surely if 
you know, it's representative of real life. There are probably people on a higher level who are genuinely good and believe that what they're doing is right and don't have any malevolent bones in their body, don't seek material or personal or power gain as their leading objective. That being said, my hunch is that a lot of them, or maybe the most powerful of them, have selfish motives. I don't even really know what their motives are. I mean, in name, it's helping people. It's defeating curses, but... It's perfectly plausible that those endeavors are not to like eliminate some great threat, but to like become the great threat so that they have the power rather than someone else have the power or less cynically and in keeping with the idea of don't attribute to malice what you can attribute to incompetence or whatever. They might just be like terrified bureaucrats and are making these knee jerk reactions out of fear. Again, total speculation, but perfectly conceivable that some of them are celebrating the Shibuya incident because of what it allowed them to do. Like take aim at Gojo. The ones who already wanted to kill Yuji have plenty of ammo now to go after Yuji. So breaking away from them doesn't feel terrible to me. It feels dangerous and it feels somewhat counterproductive to the larger goal of like being good and doing good things and helping people because even the force against the villains is fighting itself. But at the same time, good riddance. Let's assemble the people who, who are actually heroic. Thankfully for them, they happen to be some of the most powerful. So this episode, despite having no action, is pretty earth shattering for the series. I think in a lot of ways, it's the perfect close. Like for, for some time in season two, I felt like the, the intro, the first five episodes with the backstory and this latter majority were disconnected in some ways. The first five episodes were just so so, so perfectly artfully crafted, painted the dilemma of a, a sorcerer and the, the backstory behind Gojo and Ghetto so well. Only then to have it be like not Ghetto. Personally, I think I lost the thread a little bit at certain points. But after seeing this episode, there's a very strong connection between the two and one that's really important for the show. I mean, there's many, but what I'm thinking about now is Ghetto's dilemma, which is the Jujutsu society's dilemma about like, how do you fight all this darkness by yourself without just becoming cynical and hateful and becoming that very darkness for seemingly no reward. Not me giving his life here. Yuji going through the apex of that in this arc, you know, being, I'll argue, indirectly responsible, but nevertheless involved in a mass death event, watching his mentor die in front of his eyes, watching Nobara almost die, but definitely alive, etc, etc. At heart, I think, is a question of what to do with darkness and what to do with evil. You can let it totally consume you. You can draw the conclusion that, well, since life is unfair, life is terrible, I'm just going to take care of myself and look out for what I need, no matter what I have to do to get there. The world is just terrible anyway. People are horrible. That selfish approach that we've seen again and again in this season. Or you can genuinely really be against darkness and for good and have your lines, but at the same time, use the darkness, give into it a little bit, become your enemies, adopt some of their methods, and justify it to yourself that it's okay by saying it's for noble aims. Or you can do the most difficult work of not giving into it, not letting it control you, learning how to control it, not shying away from it, but also not being destroyed by it, not being crushed by it. That I think is largely the purpose of Yuji's story this season is like, how far down can he go? It was all well and good before, right? We're fighting curses, we're doing this great thing, we have cool friends. It's an adventure. We can tell ourselves all manner of things about how everything's fine and the darkness really isn't that bad, it's manageable. Until it fully rears its ugly head and crashes into your life in the worst possible way at the worst possible moment. What do you do with that and how do you conceptualize it? And it turns out the answer is Toto. <laughs> Toto is the solution. Toto, another one, speaking of which, who is part of the Jujutsu society, but is not really part of the Jujutsu, ju ah, Jujutsu society. He's there for a higher cause and his brother, but it's also Nobara. It's also Nanami. It's even the, the lazy guy who's been shirking his duties the whole arc until the final moments. And I think in there somewhere is a question of what do you trust people with? What do you really see inside of human nature? Is human nature just inherently terrible and therefore has to be controlled by the people who are you know, in name good. Do you try to sort of hem people in with a story and narrative about what the world is and what they can do, like an attack on Titan with the walls? Or do you see humanity as something good that deserves the full truth? Believe in, and by extension, implicitly demand responsibility from each individual to understand and handle their darkness and just to believe in people. And yeah, do your best, but share the burden a little bit. Give people that opportunity. This is maybe a, a hot take, but things are not going well. <laughs> This is not great and it's on the villains, but like there's some critical role that the Jujutsu society played in it. This was their method. It's not really working. So much damage has been done already. The problem has been so severely exacerbated and it's the heroes that are gonna have to put that on their shoulders and try to fix. But there's sort of an inevitability in the fact that this is coming out, that the curses are growing, that they're being more exposed, that people will find out. I'm totally against killing Yuji for so many reasons, but even practically killing him would eliminate Sukuna, which is legitimate. That's a win, but it won't eliminate the problem. To me, there's a deeper issue at play here in this world and the way it's set up that's going to take a lot to unravel. But first, I think that the next season or the events of the next season seem clear to an extent, though like I'm consistently wrong about the show. It seems like there's going to be some kind of curse epidemic, which like this is weir really weird to say, but I feel like might be welcome in a sense because we can we can go back to doing what we do. Like this season was great in its terribleness and that it was so intense, so unrelenting with the, the pain and the action. And I mean, look, all this happened in uh, what, a day or two days? There might be time to breathe, you think? you'd hope. There's still a lot of things to be reckoned with from season two. 
that we'll probably see as well. Highlights of the season for me were definitely the first five episodes. I think it was done so well, so beautifully. And of course, no surprise here, the, the Toto scenes, which Toto just gives me life. He's the greatest ever. He can go on the squad. He can go on the elite cross TV show dream team. I don't even care if he has one hand. This season was uh, a ride. There are like as many character deaths or near deaths as I get copyright claims on these videos. That's a lot. Huge thank you to all of you for watching this series, for following the series, for making it so, so enjoyable, so fun. Especially with this series, I'm going to say for like filling me in on stuff that I missed because it's a dense show. You guys really, really killed it with that and it helped me out a lot. So thank you. Thank you, of course, to all my patrons for making these videos, all videos, everything possible. You have my undying love and appreciation now and forever. On that note, very, very, very long overdue. A shout out to people who joined the top tier on Patreon over the last few months. Kirkland Patterson, Ink Architect, Starkey, Jesse Carmines, and Wilson Nguyen. This is the last video I will make and post for 2023. So happy new year to everyone. Thank you for making this a wonderful year. And I will see you either very soon for one of the other currently running shows or down the road for Jujutsu Kaisen season three.